the completely new 2011 Kia Sportage. I'm taking it on a thousand mile journey to see how it performs. Let's find out. In terms of styling, it's definitely a looker. From every angle, it looks fresh. It's also form following function. The wheel arches follow a lot of current designers philosophy, but I like what they did with the roof line and the C-pillar. With the alloy wheels, it looks like they might be paying homage to the Alfa Romeo Cloverleaf design or perhaps the Volkswagen GTI, but they look great. Inside, the interior and instrument panel are also fresh and well-designed. Just to the left of the steering wheel, you have controls for the parking brake off. You also have traction control off, which I don't recommend. And you have a downhill mode, which is great if you're heading down a mountain. This will keep you uh, going slow and keep the engine in low gear. The plaid cloth seats might also be a nod to Volkswagen's design in the GTI. But just like the windows and door locks, they are power controlled. Plenty of room for storage in the center console. There's the stick, which you can control in manual mode and drive just by clicking it to the left. Heating, air conditioning. There's a control for your heated seats. Two chargers, great for long journeys. And you got your navigation, you've got your backup camera, and of course your audio here. You can control the volume on the steering wheel, also your Bluetooth, and your cruise control. I do wish you could control the map mode and get it so you can see navigation on the screen from the steering wheel. I like the way Kia put the red line indicator straight up on the Sportage. The dual zone climate control has a great feel to it. It's also easy to control and get the right temperature in the cabin for either passenger. I definitely like the way the information screen is laid out. You've got media options here, your satellite radio, you can easily see the title, channel, and artist. And uh, similarly, there's a lot of presets for the FM as well. In terms of map mode, I think it actually takes a little bit long for the agree statement to turn on. But uh, navigation is actually very, very good in the Sportage here. Plenty of room for the whole family in the back seat. Though on long journeys, it does tend to look a little messy. Cargo space is good, and of course you can fold down the back seats if you need more room. The dual sunroofs are a nice touch. The Sportage is powered by a 2.4 liter 16 valve dual overhead cam 4 cylinder engine. It'll get you to 60 miles per hour in under 10 seconds with a top speed of 114 miles per hour. In terms of fuel economy, you can expect an average of 25 miles per gallon, 22 in the city and 31 on the highway. Driving around the north here, you notice that SUVs are everywhere and uh, the Kia Sportage is a good one at a good price. It starts under $19,000. The EX here starts at around $23,500 and as equipped with all the luxury options including navigation, you're out the door about $28,500. So, seems like a fair deal. You also have the option to equip the Kia Sportage with all-wheel drive, however I think the front-wheel drive version is probably good enough for most people in the snow. It's got traction control, it's got a very high ground clearance, and uh, for most people I think it'll get you by just fine in the snow. For me, it's been pretty good. We've seen a little bit of icy conditions and uh, no problems with that whatsoever. You'll be sacrificing about one mile per gallon if you go for the all-wheel drive. The satellite navigation picks up on traffic pretty well. 
the red shows where the traffic is. You can see from the scale that it's two miles right now, and for about half of that there's traffic, so looks like there's about one mile of traffic ahead of us. Sportage is no track star, but handles the turns pretty well. The gauges look pretty cool at night, as does this bridge. Driving at night on some pretty windy roads with uh, recent snowfall, and uh, to me the Kia seems pretty confident. You sit up high, but with the traction control and the anti-lock brakes, you definitely have a feeling of confidence. Plus the large wheels, they really help you grip the road very well. In a quarter of a mile, keep left onto East Putnam Avenue. Well, she's got a pretty funny voice, that navigator, but she did just tell us how to detour around traffic heading into New York City. So that's gonna save us some time. And it did get us here. The Sportage has been a nice travel companion. I'll only note a couple little complaints. One, when you just start the car and you want the navigation system to come on, the disclaimer screen stays on for about nine seconds. They're probably just making sure you read it though. And the cruise control, when you accelerate, it doesn't exactly set to the speed that you accelerate. I think it creeps down a few miles per hour. But these are just minor things. Just like the artists in Lyme, Connecticut, basically combined the best techniques of the day with the use of light and lack of light, as well as the impressionist techniques from the past, I think Kia has done the same thing. They've basically taken the reliability of the Japanese car and combined it with the best styling techniques of the day uh, to produce their lineup of cars, and they've been very successful. With the Sportage, They've basically taken the look of, I'd say, the Nissan Murano, which is a great looking car, and combine it with great technology and features, all at a very fair price. So the Kia Sportage is a great car, and uh, I think Kia pulled it off. I'm driving Ivan Katz.